Are you ready to learn some things from the past that apply to you in the present? Because that's exactly what we're going to do today. And if you've got a point that I didn't make, tell us all about it in the comments. Or maybe just discuss which painting is the coolest. Now, let's get started with our first and probably most famous painting, the Mona Lisa, painted by Leonardo da Vinci, often described as the most known, viewed, the most written about and the most parodied work of art in human history. The Mona Lisa depicts an Italian noble woman called Lisa Gerardini, painted with oil on a 77 times 53 centimeter poplar panel. The most known work of art is stunningly small compared to other great works of art, of course. Which leads us directly to the point of the painting being on the first place in this list. Bigger is not always better. At a less than one square meter canvas space, the Mona Lisa is not only the most known work of art in the world, but also holds the world record of highest known painting endurance valuation in history. In 1962, it was evaluated at 100 million US dollars. That is the equivalent of 870 million US dollars in 2021. And considering the great inflation we had in the last two years alone, it might have overstepped the threshold of 1 billion dollars in estimated value. The painting can be viewed in Paris, France, but only from a safe distance with glass protecting it against art thieves and possible damage. Given the Mona Lisa is so small and yet had such a huge impact, on the art community even 500 years after being made. It teaches us not all great things have to be big. Sometimes it's the small and intricate works of art that hold the biggest value. For you, that means you can start small with everything, not just art. Take a small step and work out once a week. Just talk to your crush casually. It can go as far as don't buy the biggest drawing tablet and the best working computer you can afford, but one that you feel comfortable with. It's not the greatness of the things that we use, but the greatness of the things that we create with what we have that makes them truly valuable. Number two on our list is The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Painted in the summer of 1889 by the Dutch artist, it depicts the view from his asylum room at saint remy de provence just before sunrise. Looking at it, you most likely notice the village in the bottom right, which is completely made up. There is not and has never been a village where Van Gogh decided to paint one. The painting has permanently been in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City since 1941, where it can be viewed by almost everyone. It is one of the most recognizable paintings in the world, which is part of Van Gogh's success. The art style he practiced is recognizable and can truly be distinguished from any other post-impressionistic artist. Big lumps of oil paint create mountains, hills and valleys all over the painting. And even though the art style is very far from realistic, it can be easily read and understood. Learning from his works, you should strive to draw your own art, rather than copying a style of others. Don't take this as you shouldn't study other artists or you should not take some habits other artists practice. Think of the lesson as don't compare your art to somebody else's art and aspire to create something alike. But compare your art to only your past and improve by fitting habits of others into your work in order to become your own greatest fan. The third place on our list is The Fallen Angel by Alexander Carbonell. Painted in 1847 by a 24-year-old determined artist from France, it depicts the devil after his fall from heaven. With an incredibly detailed and anatomically correct body, the realistic painting style boasts knowledge and commitment. However, the fallen angel has not become famous because of Cabanel's commitment to paint even the smallest muscle fiber visible through the skin. The reason for its fame is only about 5% of the painting he had done. The face, and most importantly, the expression he put on the devil's face. Often called sadness in anger or true wrath, the devil's face is distorted by muscles twitching in anger, yet he has a single teardrop falling down from his right eye. Mouth and nose are covered, often described as hidden in shame. The fallen angel teaches us, no matter how good your painting is, all that is seen and all that is remembered is the focus and the greatest things about your art. There are no articles anywhere covering the great anatomy of this painting, but a hundred different ones going on and on about the single teardrop running down the devil's face. What we can learn from that is to reduce our art to its core 
and let it revolve around it. It doesn't matter how much I render a piece of clothing from an anatomy study. It teaches us to focus on the message of our painting. This is perfectly applicable to something like concept art as of today. Focus on the task you are given and what it is about. Do not focus about your painting and don't get lost where nobody will see your effort. Number four is The Scream by Edvard Munch. Less a painting, but more a composition, created in 1893. Just like the Starry Night, it has become one of the most iconic art styles to exist in modern society, depicting an agonized man on a walk at sunset. It is said to express a scream of nature that Munch felt while going on a walk, where the sky suddenly turned deep red and orange. He painted the scream four different times, two in paint and two in in pastels. Incredibly simplistic rendering and usage of paint strokes makes this painting very expressive. The only complexity comes in color, where Munch used a vast variety to express as much emotion as possible to symbolize human anxiety. This piece can tell us that even the simplest shapes and composition can truly hold value. The complexity of your paintings have nothing to do with the complexity of your composition and are in no way bound to each other. It teaches us that we don't need to aim for the greatest and most complex painting, color variety or composition. We need to aim for what we want to tell our audience and sometimes ourselves. The most prominent thing that we can learn about this painting is that the most important thing about painting is emotion, no matter how it turns out. Now, number five is Foxes by Franz Marc, an abstract cubism painting by a German painter made in 1913. It depicts Marc's breakdown of the simple shapes of the animals in a harmonized pattern, reaching from cubism to minimalism. This painting was just recently auctioned in 2022. Marc expressed the most important shapes of foxes into abstract cubicles, mashed in a harmonious way, teaching us about harmony in simplicity. Simplifying shapes is something you hear all the time when trying to get into drawing and painting. That is for a good reason. Not only is it the best way to learn and make progress, but also it is the best way to put expression into your paintings, even if it's not in correlation with reality. The foxes teach us that we do not need to draw what is right, but we need to draw what is right for us, be it as far from reality as it can be. The painting and drawing we do is our world where we decide anything and everything, so we should not express reality, but our own reality. Number six is The Great Wave of Kanagawa by Katsushka Hokusai. I'm sorry, by the way, for the name, but it's a Japanese artist who created this very well-known piece in late 1831. The woodblock print depicts a stormy sea with boats being tossed by a great wave forming in front of Mount Fuji. It is a contender of the most known artwork in Japanese history and possibly the most reproduced image in all of history. It has influenced many artists, including Vincent van Gogh and Claude Monet, to which we will come later as well. The artwork was the first of a series of artworks Hokusai produced that was called 36 Views of Mount Fuji. Knowing that, it is strange at first that Mount Fuji is almost the least prominent thing in the composition, except for breaking the silhouette of the sea, which is exactly the thing we can learn from him. The point of this painting is the view of Mount Fuji and that we have, even though it is by far less prominent than the boats and the wave in the foreground. It teaches us that the message of our painting does not need to be the focus of our painting. It can be something you only see at second glance. Don't get lost in painting the focus of what you want to convey, but get lost in painting your painting. Number 7. A Friend in Need by Caius Marcellus Coolidge. It is a painting that you might have seen multiple variations of, since there were many kinds of dogs playing poker paintings by Coolidge. However, A Friend in Need is probably the most known one. Painted in 1903, a high time for poker fans, it depicts a cheating player amongst the round. Obviously, the dogs are meant to symbolize people, and that brings us directly to the lesson of this painting. It is draw what you like, not what everybody else likes. It will help you improve faster as well, since drawing something you like is surely more fun as drawing something the vast majority of people wants to see. Coming to number 8 and number 9 at the same time. The Japanese Bridge and Impression Sunrise, both by Claude Monet. 
With these two paintings, we see a very rough and suggestive art style. Claude Monet painted with fast and messy strokes that began to slow down over time, until you could see the full piece when you took a step back from the canvas. The two paintings show us that you should strive to be the best that you can be, and nobody else. Surely, Monet had the skills to paint realistically, however, he chose not to, and stay in his field of suggesting a lot of things and making our brain fill in the things that he did not paint directly. Monet's works teach us that the devil is not always in the details. Often, it is better to leave things rough and let the viewer decide what he sees. Sometimes a painting is done even if not everything is detailed, and sometimes if nothing is detailed. Monet teaches us to know when to stop. And last but not least, The Sleeping Gypsy by Henri Rousseau, painted in 1897. A lesser known painting as all of the previous ones for sure. Part of the reason is the obvious lack of knowledge Rousseau had when painting it. A compositional mess, no real perspective, and the rendering might need a few more passes to look decent. So why is this painting amongst the most known ones in the entire world hanging in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City? Now, I am no art critic, and I do not know Rousseau's history, but I know what lesson we can get from his painting. Never give up. I'll be honest, if I painted this exact piece, it would have never seen the light of day, until a few years ago, that is. Rousseau's piece teaches us to be proud of whatever artwork we make, even if there were masters of painting 400 years before us that painted the Mona Lisa, and we can never live up to even a fraction of their skills. We need to be proud of what we make, because if we are not, we might as well not do it. Now, this was quite much information that got dumped on you. I hope I could bring you some good advice, and maybe some art history will stick with it. As I said before, tell me what you think is the best advice and we can learn from. Maybe you have another point that I haven't made yet. Let the people know. With that said, happy drawing, happy painting, and goodbye.